there, how's it going? Welcome to Screen Speak! <laughs> um, welcome to Screen Speak. <laughs> it, is a, it is a podcast that is all about movies, life, and so much more. Uh, I'm Jordan Anderson. This is my podcast, I promise. And, and I really appreciate you coming by and giving it a listen. Now, I feel like I really should address what just happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I just watched a movie called Lighthouse. Uh, the with, Lighthouse. Yeah, or, yeah, what did I say? You, you just said Lighthouse. A Lighthouse? It's or The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse, Jesus. okay. Uh, I just watched the movie The Lighthouse with uh, with my with my good friend Adam Wall. Hi, everyone. Um, he is actually here, uh, fit physically here this time. Yeah. Um, but I just told him I'm like this this movie like it's still like we just came from watching it so it's very very fresh. Neither of us had seen it before, and I'm like I think I should do just a crazy introduction <laughs> to this podcast because it's just so fitting for this. This film, this this is a mess. This, this, this is a there's there's a lot to unpack. So like you're very much gonna get our fresh thoughts and examinations on this movie. I guess I would say. So so Adam, um, what what do you think? Or yeah, what what do you think? It was an v- incredibly memorable movie. Like I I I very much enjoyed the lighthouse. So overall, as a whole picture, you should go and see this movie. Like it is incredibly interesting and like it, it it was i was on the edge of my seat the whole time in a way that i didn't really in, like i enjoyed but i also didn't enjoy at the exact same time it is off-putting to a level that i honestly haven't seen in many films before and it's like constantly just like making you incredibly uncomfortable in a way that's like really cool and awesome and it's a really good movie i think what was your what are your initial thoughts jordan Honestly, and I don't always like to, <clears throat> I don't always like to draw comparisons to other movies, but I really, I, I was, I was very much reminded of The Shining, for this in a way. Yeah. I mean, not just because of like the obvious of like people having cabin fever and going insane, mm-hmm. but in the way that there's a lot of strange imagery in the movie that not all of it's really explained. The way that it slowly is taking its time to ramp up the the tension Mm -hmm. um it just it kept reminding me of that but like this movie is not i mean i may be saying that it's like the shining but it's really its own thing i can't say that there's any other movie i've seen that's even remotely like this it is really weird i guess well let's let's start with the introduction how did you hear about the lighthouse did you know anything about this movie before we got into it yeah i mean i know i know it came out in 2019 and i you know i I knew the cast i knew the director um robert eggers i don't know have you ever seen a movie from him before i don't know any of the movies what else is he well he's he's relatively new as far as like a director goes but he he got his big like if you want to call it not i don't even want to say big but he made the movie the witch did you oh. ever hear about that? I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it. See, I've, I haven't seen it either, but I just know that he got independent film recognition for that movie, and it's also a low-budget horror film. Mm-hmm. I think it's much different than this one. This one seems to actually have... I think there's actually a pretty pretty decent budget, probably, at work for a movie like this. But, anywho, um, no, as far as like what I knew about it, I just knew that it was supposed to be a creepy horror movie it's shot in black and white um it's shot in four by three aspect ratio so it's really trying to emulate like really old movies Mm -hmm. um and i just knew that it was getting a lot of buzz as far as the acting goes and just originality i guess yeah but other than that man i mean i really i didn't know a ton yeah not really Uh, i like i knew the premise of the movie like i knew the idea in my head and the reason I wanted I wanted to talk about this movie specifically was I had I had COVID like two weeks ago now, and I'm like I was trying to think of a movie that we could talk about that's sort of like emblematic of that theme, and I like I don't know I feel like a lot of the disease movies are already talked about too much these days, so I'm like I was I was sitting in isolation like definitely nothing like the lighthouse, but I was are in you, isolation sure? for <laughs> a week and a half, and I, I was starting to I was starting to see where they were coming from and the going crazy in a lighthouse. So that's why I want to watch this movie, and I like I heard about it through a few friends, like they've talked and like been like you should see this movie, it's really good, 
And I was like, all right. I like I like Willem Dafoe. I like Willem, uh, Willem Dafoe was phenomenal oh, dude, in this yeah. movie. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean Robert Pattinson was also very, very good, but mm-hmm. Willem Dafoe was a scene stealer. Dude, he really was, honestly. Like the acting was fucking top notch in this movie. And like, ugh. I don't know if it was a lot of it too was just like it was two guys stuck in a lighthouse. So all they had was dialogue and like the way they did the dialogue in this movie came off also kind of creepy at times. Yeah. Like, there would be parts in the movie where they were saying things, and I only, like, sort of understood what they were saying some of the time. Because, like, I don't know if it was just gibberish and they didn't want me to understand it, but that's how I felt about yeah. it. Yeah. it was just, like, it was crazy, dude. Well, it was weird, because, like, so, like, we were watching a stream of the movie, and I know... Like, I don't know. I don't know if this was, like, one of those movies, but, like, I felt like I had to kind of adjust the volume because when they were talking, I also couldn't really always make out everything that they were saying. But then anytime they're outside, it's just like, (laughs) you know, like, it's, like, super loud ocean sounds and everything like that. So, I don't know. The audio, yeah, the audio was interesting. But, yeah, they're, after a certain point, I kind of gave up trying to figure out everything they were saying. Like, I got the gist of, like, yeah. the main things that they were saying. Um, but I, I would be curious to see... Because I think this, this takes place in the, like, late 1800s, I think. That sounds it, right. It, it seems, around then, yeah. It seems like it takes place around that time, and so, like, maybe, like, around New England or something like that? I don't really know, because this movie doesn't really ever say where it's taking place at, but I just... I bring that up because of the dialogue. Um, I just wonder if, like, that was appropriate for the period, like, people talking, like however they talked in this movie. They were talking, like, poetry at times, so I feel like that was that was more just, like, emblematic of, like, it's a movie. And yeah. Like, they were, I think they were romantic. Like, because there was... Willem Dafoe has so many, like, lines of him just, like, saying, like, poetry that rhymes for, like, two minutes, and it all sounds, like, beautiful, but after a while, I start to... I start to... <laughs> learn, like, I was losing it a little bit, too, because it was just, like, so quickly... Yep. moving through and I don't think you were supposed to really understand it you were supposed to just be kind of hypnotized by it yeah there and, there is a there is a quality to this movie uh, like almost a hypnotic quality because as off-putting as this movie is like I kind of like just kept getting more invested the more it was going because like you're trying to you kind of want to figure out you're like what is going on here like what is going on on this island yeah and like and and I think it, the the movie the movie works well on on those levels where like you as the audience member are like trying to figure out or keep a grasp a, a grip on reality mm-hmm. but then i think eventually like the characters you're just like i don't even like i couldn't even make sense of this and that's i think what they're trying to go for is <laughs> yeah. uh these, these people have lost their minds um yeah there's okay there's uh there's a lot of things that we need to unpack, like just specific scenes. Yeah, so, let's, uh, let's, let's, I, let's start going through the film, I think. Yeah, I'm just going to like pick out specific scenes in my head that, that stick, okay. and, and we can we can pick them apart from there. So, things seem really off-putting when they get to the island. They don't really know each other, which yeah. is kind of strange that like they just both get stationed there, but they don't even give each other's names for a while. Like, yeah. it's, I, I don't know why they did that. It was a very odd relationship. I feel like Robert Pattinson too is just like ridiculously like cagey, and you're you're wondering like why is he being an asshole? Yeah, like, he's, I feel he's like very standoffish. They're, they're, like, they're I don't both, want to talk to anybody. Yeah, they're very standoffish with each other, and you're like, well, why? I don't like you two are alone on an island together, but like it it adds a little bit to the movie because they like don't really know each other, and they've been like living together for four weeks already, and they're just like they just introduce each other by their first names, kind of thing. Yeah. And they were only was, supposed to be there for four weeks, right? Like, yeah. Isn't that what they, they say? Yeah. Like, I don't even know how long they, like, were I think there. it was, like, four <laughs> fortnights, maybe, too. But it wasn't very long. It was, like, a month or two, definitely. Was the initial plan. Until mm. things <laughs> things went things went a little bit haywire. So, I think we have to talk about the first notion of this movie. Like, I mean, the movie was already, like, getting generally disturbing from the beginning. And then there's a... There's a this scene that happens with a bird. Oh god! Um, and, and Willem Dafoe says because there's it's very strange because like that first like this little sea bird, the sea urchin, is blocking Robert Pattinson's path. He's like, get out of the way, bird! Yeah, get out of the way! And the bird's just like, bah, bah. and and he he's already 
kind of on edge anyway. Like, I think he's just tense. He's frustrated yeah. from being there. The conditions suck, and this bird's annoying him. But Willem Dafoe's like, you can't kill the bird. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything with the bird. But then, at one point, like, okay. I'm it was the say. day before he left. Yeah. Number two, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, there's a bird that gets stuck in, like, an oil Right? Yeah, I think, well, not, it was or, the water supply, I thought. Was it the water supply? Yeah, because he was trying to get water out, and then it was all, like, bloody and black. Oh, okay. And then okay. he went out to look, and uh, there was a dead bird in the fucking water supply. So he yes. was really pissed off. Yes, he was not happy with that, and then another bird comes to check, and senses his anger toward the bird or something, <laughs> and so the bird tries to attack him, but he somehow grabs the thing by, like, its, its talons, and just smashes it repeatedly on a rock. <laughs> And, and I'll, I'll be real. I, I, I should uh, I should uh, put a disclaimer right now. Um, I'm gonna talk full spoilers for yeah. this movie. Like, there's no way for me to talk about this movie without just talking about revealing scenes I agree, in the movie. Yeah. But you should go see this movie. It's very good. He <laughs> destroys this bird. Like it. Well, I, I I thought he was just gonna stop at like one or two. Yeah. Right. Just, like like he just like he, like he snapped its neck. Like just. No, nope. Adam. Why don't you why don't you tell him he how just the like, rest of that played out? Oh my god, he fucking he grabs the bird and after like two hits, you're like, okay, the bird is dead, and he just keeps on wailing on the thing too. And honestly, the very the special I don't know if it's like special effects or if they use like an actual bird or something, but the the effects are very good because the bird just starts like splattering yeah, all over the place. Yeah, you can see the blood splatter go everywhere. And like I think the black and white kind of adds to it a little bit too cuz he just like it's just like a mangled mess when he's done with it and it's so off-putting cuz you're like Jesus Christ dude this guy's fucked in the head yeah, as he, he just he, he took it a little too far. It. it was just so it was like the movie up until that point was off-putting but that was the first point you're like oh my gosh this is a fucking weird dude there's and, some weird you, stuff going and, well, on and here. you know like and really it's after it is shortly after that that things take a much worse turn the the winds change the winds change and actually it looks like it almost looked like the because the the wind like stopped almost it was weird Mm -hmm. like yeah i mean i guess the wind changed because he said it's bad luck to do it yeah which it makes sense uh, yeah dude i guess like that's a lot of bad luck i feel like i would listen to willem dafoe if he was a lighthouse keeper he had a great beard he had a great beard he was smoking a pipe constantly that's yep. something else I want to talk about. They are smoking constantly in this movie. I mean, I whoa, probably whoa, whoa. would if I was on this island. I, I would as well if I was on this island. But Jesus Christ, their lungs, dude, must be fucking terrible. I mean, it they, is the 1800s. Like, he was, like, work, like, the first, like, few weeks, too, he was just, like, working constantly while having a cigarette in his mouth. Like, he was fucking hauling rocks up a, up yeah, a cliff. with the cigarette in his With mouth. the cigarette still yeah, in his I, mouth. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, 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 that definitely doesn't seem good. I was impressed, honestly. I wonder if that's how, like, it actually was then, or if they were just, like, incredibly stressed out in well, that situation. Well, I, I actually think, and, and I might be mistaken, because I know a little bit about some of, like, the making of this movie, and I did hear that the the director, Robert Eggers, I, I think that they actually used, like, real equipment from that time period with, like, lighthouse keeping and whatnot. So I think it was, as far as I could tell, it looked authentic. It looked, the whole thing. I don't know anything about lighthouse keeping, but <laughs> it, it seemed authentic, the stuff they were doing, like, the work. Yeah, no, it seemed right to me. Um, and yeah, and actually, like, who knew that there would be so much that would go into a lighthouse? Like, you'd be like, what, what is there to do? Yeah. Like, I figure it would just, I would be sitting there watching the light go by. Nope. And just, I guess, I guess there is a light, like, you gotta upkeep the house, because it's like the 1800s, you know? Like, stuff falls apart all the time, and you gotta, like, haul wood, and you gotta, like, like, oil the light, I guess? I don't know. There, there seems like there were things to do, like, constantly. They painted it, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Which I, even I was kind of like... Why? Like, like, <laughs> he, like who, who cares? <laughs> I think painting things, like, people paint bridges all the time because it helps, like, it stops deterioration. Yeah. Because of, like, I, I think they do it for bridges, though, to stop rust. Okay. So maybe it was completely useless to paint the lighthouse, but they maybe had, they, maybe they, they, they were just the... bored and looking for something to do, too, honestly. And yeah, I mean, they had they had time on their hands, uh, for sure. They definitely did. Um, so I, a couple more things. I, I mean, there's a lot of things I want to talk about, but... The movie is in black and white. Yeah. Did you think that worked? I think it really did, honestly. Like the four, yeah. the, the four three was honestly a very big difference too. Yeah. The, was, aspect was, the aspect ratio was like almost a square. 
Mm-hmm. And at first it was kind of weird. I was like, oh, okay, why is a movie like this? Yeah. But it worked really well. It looked... I got in, I got into it. Like, I, I, I got pretty, like, just invested in the world that the movie was, was building. And before too long, I, I stopped noticing that. Yeah. And it did actually add to the feel of this being an old story. It really did, yeah. Um, so I actually thought it was fine. I think, I think it had a lot, like, to the eeriness of the movie, too. Yeah. Like, it... And I very much actually liked that it was in black and white. Especially, like, they're, they're, like there's certain scenes, uh, in particular Willem Dafoe scenes, where, like, the, just the way that they lit his face in the black and white and, like, his eyes, like, looked insane. Um, if that was in color, I mean, like, I mean, I'm sure it would still be very creepy, but I do think that the black and white was, uh, it, it very much helped make me even more unsettled. I agree, yeah. It was, um... A- it was unsettling, and the way it was shot worked very well to make it even more unsettling as a movie. Yes. So, good on them for doing that. Uh, I was also curious, so you, towards the beginning of the movie, uh, Robert Pattinson ignores, or he, he turns down a, a toast from Willem Dafoe. He's oh, just yeah. like, he's like, oh, we can't we can't drink, we're, we're lighthouse keepers. <laughs> and Dafoe's like, no, like, you don't turn down my che- my cheers or what whatever. Yeah, um it, it seemed like he he kind of stopped giving a shit about that uh, before too long because they they drink a lot. Well, they well they started drinking after so after he killed the seagulls when he started drinking because it was that last night. Oh yeah, because so like he, they're supposed to get picked up. Yeah, because he killed the seagull and then the night before he left, they were like, "Let's drink together," and that was the first night they got drunk together. And from there, the drinking <laughs> continued quite far. I mean, like. <laughs> I could see if you're like new on the job, not wanting to drink, and my bosses would be like, "Hey, you should drink." I'd be like, "Nah, dude." Like, yeah, you're I like, I'm, I, I, I just want to do my job. I'm here like, to do my job, man. So, but yeah. it was the last night, so I understand why he wanted to drink. And then things kind of got worse as the storm came in. So yeah. basically, I guess, well, let's let's keep going through this movie. So after yeah. after he beats the shit out of the seagull, and the seagull is very dead. <laughs> it's very. And dead. the winds <laughs> turn, and the sea is angry at him, mm-hmm. and the sailors are angry at him. Then the storm comes, and then they start to be worried because they're not getting picked up because the storm is so bad. <clears throat> and then things kind of go a little bit haywire where they're drinking all the time. Well, they find booze on the island, right? Yeah, they had like they had like reserves. I remember, and yeah. all the reserves were were more alcohol. <laughs> yeah, but like it's not food. It's just oh, thank God. <laughs> I don't even know what were they even. After a while, they don't even talk about what they were eating anymore. I well, they like, ate lobster. Oh, uh, okay. They probably just ate lobster. Did you not like me, lobster? <laughs> I'm sorry that 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 scene. I was like, dude, say you like his cooking, just please. Like, <laughs> please <laughs> oh my God. stop. Don't make him so mad, man. <laughs> Yeah, because I, so that scene was, I think they were just incredibly drunk at the time, right? Yeah. Well, them, yeah. them being drunk was either like they were like beating the shit out of each other or they were like madly in love with each other. Yeah, it, it was, was weird really, I, I, and it was, it was darkly comic too. Cause like there's scenes where like, like Defoe's like, duh, 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 like, yeah, they're, and, like they're, they're dancing, he's like dance with me, dance. And then the very next second, I hate you. And they're just beating the shit out of each other. And you're like, what the hell? I, they were definitely not very good drunks together, but no. in that one specific scene, they were like incredibly drunk. And I, I guess they were like, they were just yelling at each other again. And they, he fucking hates on his cooking. Yep. And like, oh man, dude, he was pretty mad about the whole cooking. Thing. Yeah, and that that was one of those because you said that Devo, uh, Defoe was a couple of those monologues. Yeah, where he that was just, another monologue where you just yeah, start he's reciting him. something, <laughs> and then at the end of it, I don't know, like like Padson just gives in. He's just like, yeah, your lobster's all right, man. Like, yeah, because yeah. he well, he was cursing him and telling him like, your death will be you. The sea will swallow you. Yeah, it was and intense. The fish will eat you. Some, like, sailor's curse of, like, telling, like, a pirate sort of thing. Yeah. I would be pretty freaked out if William Dafoe was yelling curses at me like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I that, could see why Robert Pattinson gave in in that situation. That one scene where they just straight up have the alcohol and they're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, 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 just, like, just, right behind each other yeah, with bottles. Yeah, they're just slamming, <laughs> slamming. What I'm sure is probably just straight up rum or vodka or I don't <laughs> Some even know. Thing. Some, yeah, and then and then eventually they run out of that and start drinking the lighthouse. Basically, like they're drinking gasoline. Yeah, or they're, they're drinking the oil of the lighthouse. It's weird. <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know if it was like gasoline or like 
if the oil was actually drinkable because it seemed like they were just like drinking it and it was like oh this is just like alcohol yeah like maybe it was like kerosene or something like that I don't, can you drink kerosene maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it. Let's go. Uh, because because if nothing else, this is a public service announcement. Don't drink kerosene. <laughs> but I I, I want to see. It. Can you drink kerosene as a Google? Let's see. Can you drink? How do you spell kerosene? C e r o s. C ker c e r o. Uh no no K K E R O oh, my bad my bad K E R there you can, go can you drink oh the lighthouse <laughs> look it, <laughs> <laughs> it comes up so somebody they're knows. listening to us man <laughs> they, they know okay uh eating okay I got I'm gonna bring this up we'll bring up the article yeah here we go okay revolting lighthouse shoot included eating mud and pissing himself <laughs> oh god I mean I'll probably this this uh, movie was th- there was a lot of that going on honestly like i was surprised they didn't die of like dysentery because it did not seem like they were living very like healthy lifestyles at all oh god no and, and actually i think that also did, um went into their madness is that eventually they were just drinking so much they probably poisoned themselves on it yeah and they were probably hallucinating from la- starvation yeah, or because they're only eating shellfish probably so they would probably have they have scurvy they're dehydrated because they're only they're only drinking gin. They're like living in their own shit. So there there's another bad thing. There's just like so many things that like led them to the madness that it's pretty understandable that they went crazy after a while. You know, <laughs> only a complete fuel would eat or drink kerosene purposely. <laughs> <laughs> Ingestion of kerosene is harmful and can be fatal. Oh, kerosene okay. is sometimes recommended as an old folk remedy for killing head lice. Oh, that's good to know. Huh. Uh, but health agencies generally warn against this type of kerosene use, uh, just due to that whole risk of burn and serious illness and uh, death. Death, yeah. I uh, I feel like that's that's pretty recognizable. The fact though that people are like, or look at this, oh look at this though too. Did sailors drink kerosene? So that that, that might that might be a thing. I mean, God, why? Okay, so. Uh, this, to keep a long story short, sailors in the Royal Navy were given a daily ra- uh, ration of rum, okay? And if you like your grog, why is it called grog? If you like your grog a bit stronger, add some kerosene. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So they probably, yeah. They I probably mean, were drinking kerosene then, yeah. That must have been that part where, like, what was it, like, with, like, that sludge they were adding to their drink? And they're just like, mm, it was pretty good. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, they did a disturbing amount of drinking in this movie. They really did. Um, but but uh, th- there's other things we got to talk about. Yeah. So earlier on in the movie as well, I and I want you can correct me on this. So Robert Pattinson, uh, what's his character's name? I gotta stop calling him Robert Pad- Pattinson. It was right. well, his name was actually Tommy, uh, which was kind of confusing. Well, yeah, because... I thought he was Winston because they kept saying that. Or, no, 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 Willem Dafoe's, uh, I don't even know. I Winston? Heard... No, okay, I, no, no, no. He says his name is Winston, and then Willem Dafoe says he's Tommy. I remember that. And that's what they were saying for a while, and then all of a sudden Willem Dafoe switches it, and he's just like, you're Tommy. I'm probably not even real. I'm just a figment of your imagination. Winslow. 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 Winslow's his okay, my, my well, bad. Well, that's because he, he killed the guy. Do you remember that? Yes, like Willem Dafoe a... killed a guy because he did find a body well, when he Dafoe... was doing his lobster catching thing, right? Yeah, well, okay, so Willem Dafoe yeah. killed, well, his old, um, basically whoever Robert Pattinson was, like his old guy, he killed him basically. Yes, because he went insane and he died, and then, like he found his head in a like in the yep. in the cage. Okay, but Robert Pattinson also killed someone. That's how he got into that position. Do you remember that talk? Because then after that, well, yeah, because like, he's like, you shouldn't have spilled your you beans. You spilled the beans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, because he, I don't know how he killed the actual guy that was supposed to go to the island. Like, yeah, I, I don't think they ever I don't think they say. went far into it, but he, he killed a guy to go there. So he was, his name was actually Tommy. Okay, yeah. So, which, that was what was confusing to me, too, because now they were both Tom. Yes. Essentially. I'm like, well, ah, shit. No, I, I also just kind of thought they were losing their minds, and maybe they don't even know their names. Like, they're yeah. just like, I Honestly, don't even... they could have not killed a... Like, he could have not killed the guy to get on the island. But I thought it was yeah. funny when... 
Well, on the phone, kept saying, like, you spilled the beans, man. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you shouldn't have spilled your beans. I'm confused at the part where, okay, so Will and Defoe is saying. Adam, speak- there's a lot of this movie that confused me. <laughs> we're going to be say- I, I just, I feel like we're going to be saying that a lot in this episode. I was confused at. I was very, there were some parts that were pretty confusing. But the part I'm thinking of specifically is Will and Defoe is saying, you spilled the beans. Yeah. And then, um,. Uh, Robert Pattinson sees like Willem Dafoe having sex with himself or something like that. He was like hallucinating, basically. I think, yeah. And like, he also may have been making love to a squid. Yeah, I, 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 making do, love I, to I a don't squid. know. Well, no, I think he was a squid. Or he was the squid. He was the squid. I think. Okay. okay. I don't think he was making like it, it's. It was weird because he was moaning. Yeah. But like when he was about to kill, like when when, when Robert Pattinson was about to kill Willem Dafoe. He turned into like the squid creature. Yeah. So I think that was like, like I think, Willem Dafoe's Tommy was like a man of the seas, mm-hmm. or he was like a god of the seas, basically, I, or I'm at least, sure. or at least Robert Pattinson was <clears throat> hallucinating that. So that's where that came from. I but, actually expect a movie like this, and if it hasn't already been done so already, <laughs> I can almost guarantee that there are likely a lot of film analysis breakdowns of this movie where people try to like decipher the meanings like what does it all mean because there's it's a lot like the shining well yeah and and there's a lot of ways i think that you could interpret certain scenes in this movie like like for instance this is one uh towards the latter half of the movie where i don't know like they're fighting again Mm -hmm. they're beating the shit out of each other again and then he flips willem dafoe over but then it's a gray-haired version of robert pattinson remember like like he's fighting himself or something oh because he was like blonde I yeah thought that was, i thought okay or is that thought, somebody else i thought that was the guy he killed to go to the island oh i couldn't tell i just i thought it was like a that, hair dye thing i i don't know that could be a two or it could have been like a younger willem dafoe that was the other thing i thought it could have been it was mm. either a younger willem dafoe or it was the guy he already killed it I, looked I, a lot I, like willem dafoe right though so i'm like is this a younger version of him see i kind of love that i can't figure it out yeah because <laughs> like that's part of what makes this movie work is like if if everything was just spelled out and like they're just like yep he lost his mind or like they gave some exposition to oh, yeah. show why this means that this type of movie doesn't work. You need to have some, uh, you know, pardon my French, but some what the fuck moments. Yeah. To to have this thing work. I shouldn't understand what's going on if I'm like, like if I'm trying to be in the mindset of like going insane, which like the the movie wants us to think we're like we are going insane, then like not telling us what's going on and just like putting random shit in there. Yep. Like the <laughs> when he was jerking off to the fish scene. Do you remember yeah. That? I. How, how can I forget? <laughs> How can I forget? <laughs> You're just, I'm watching it. I'm like, I mean, I guess he's insane, but there's no explanation as to what's going on. They well, don't even talk about it. After. No, but that I, that was something I was going to touch on earlier. Is Because if you recall, early in the movie, they get there. He's getting himself situated in the bunk while Willem Dafoe is farting a lot. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they did that either. He's like, I'm just tired of your farts. <laughs> um, but... He digs out uh, out of like a, the bed because mm-hmm. like of, like it must have been like the previous person that was there. They had this little figure of a mer- oh, yeah. of a mermaid, and I think that's like when his mind starts like fantasizing about the mermaid because there's oh. no women there or whatever. Yeah. But then yeah, then like there's there's one scene where like I think he he's he's masturbating to it and like but it doesn't it doesn't really go into it that much. And then there's the scene where he really masturbates into it and like, they're doing all these quick cuts of him like lying on the on top of the mermaid and like thrusting and stuff and oh the merma- God, you, yeah. you know what I, what I mean like that's a it's a and but then like he's like it's like he's like hate hating himself while he's doing it. he's just like oh oh god i shouldn't be doing this but it feels good and like oh <laughs> and that was definitely like a high point in the movie where i'm like okay the movie is really starting to go off the rails now where like his his sanity is clearly just gone. Yeah. Just freaking gone. But the mermaids uh, disturbing. Or are they called sirens? Is that? I think it was. I think it was much more of a mermaid in this movie than a siren. Like what's it the, had. The, what's it had the, the difference? Sirens are like. I think they're the same thing. But I think the sirens specifically, <laughs> like they lure men with uh, like a song, and then they kill them oh, when they yeah, walk yeah, on yeah. the shore. Yes. And this was just like a mermaid that was screaming, 
So, like, it could have yeah. been a siren, but I feel it doesn't go along with the lore that I think of when I think of a siren. Yeah. I think it was just, like... Uh, weird, like, though. Like, when he finds the one in the rocks, and he starts groping it, and but then, like, it wakes up, and he's like... <laughs> he's, like, running away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, Christ, I don't know. I also like the scene where he was... Uh, uh, carrying his mud cart and it's raining and he's just like eh, 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 eh. <laughs> like just like like licking the, the rain the rain yeah or, like, it was just his tongue was <laughs> flying all over the place uh, I and there's there's multiple like scenes like that where there's no dialogue but the characters are behaving very bizarrely and I'm just like okay like sure movie why not this is this is where we're going yeah like we're just going i like it it was completely like, to insanity town take me there <laughs> yeah it was kind of funny if anything like it's just so comical seeing robert pattinson's character just like flip his tongue all over the place you're like oh my god dude this guy's going fucking insane yeah um it's weird so uh, no, okay another another scene uh which this is actually just a, a thing that goes throughout the movie so it's mm-hmm. actually part of the story um Defoe is pretty adamant early on. He's like, you don't get to go up into the actual like light source of the lighthouse. Like, oh, you yeah. you can't go there. Mm-hmm. That that's where I transform into a squid and have sex or do uh, random do, shit. Do yeah. do some strange <laughs> things. Like, but but that's my space. He's like, you don't get to come there. Um, and so naturally throughout the movie, it's like, of course, if someone tells you no, you're yeah. forbidden from coming here. You're going to be naturally curious and be like, I want to see what's up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I won't. Sp- like I mean, I'm talking about kind of some spoilers and whatnot, or no, actually, no, I was gonna say yeah, I don't right. even I don't know why this I'm is a spoiler that. episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so eventually he, I guess he kills Defoe. I mean, he definitely does. Yeah. He, yeah. Well, yeah, I was gonna say it's not a it's not a guess. He he's dead. He's pretty <laughs> dead. Yeah. Um, and and he eventually get does get up to the light and uh, sees the light oh yeah or whatever and he's it, i don't know it actually kind of reminded me of like when if you've ever seen indiana jones raiders of the lost ark like oh, when, when the ark is opening they're yeah. just like oh oh it's so beautiful oh and like, but like it melts off. yeah but yeah because the lighting is really weird in the scene because the light is like shining on his face yeah. And it's all black and white, so he looks like his face, and he's like screaming at the top of his lungs. Yes. So there's like light inside of his mouth, and it's they like really, muffle the sound a little bit too to make it just like that's part of where the where the black and white helps out a lot. Yeah, it helps out a lot. But my question for you is, do you think there was because they never show if there was something in there or if he's just like the light's so beautiful that I'm finally full blown insane. Did yeah. you think, is it like a Pulp Fiction thing where, like, we just don't know what's in the briefcase? Like, we're just like, okay, like, something's in this. It's something, for sure. Did like, you think it was something? Or just maybe a, you know... It could have been, like, insane. it could have, as honestly, just like, just like the suitcase from Pulp Fiction, it could have been nothing, you know? Like, I feel like it could have just, he could have just opened it and it was just, like, a reflection of himself. And it's like, wow, I just killed a man. Yeah. And I came up here to look at this lighthouse and there's, like, it's just nothing. It's just a light... Or there could have been, like, a demon witch in there, or the mermaid could have been in there, or, like... I mean, his mind is completely insane, so, like, what probably was actually there was probably not what he saw. So I'm glad they didn't show us, because I feel like anything they would show us, we would be questioning what it actually was. Yeah, and I do think that, uh, you know, the people have lost, like, their minds. I don't think... Like, there may be, like, some supernatural elements to the movie, but it is... I think clearly indicated that it's in their heads. Mm-hmm. Like they're insane. I, yeah. I don't think like the island itself had any haunted things or no. nothing like that. It's just they're full blown crazy. Yeah, they're drinking kerosene, only yeah. eating shellfish. That sounds so. And they were alone. So for, nauseous. Yeah, dude, it sounds terrible. Uh, yeah, it sounds terrible. But yeah, so I, I guess I was, I was wondering throughout the whole thing because it did get my curiosity. I'm like, what is in the lighthouse? Like, I, I, I wanted to know. And I am glad that when the moment does happen, it's disturbing, and the character... I don't even think the character gets what they want, because, like, they, he does his, you know, big scream, uh-huh. and then he just rolls down the lighthouse, <laughs> probably breaking every bone in his body, because that looked terrifically painful. <laughs> that looks pretty bad. And then he ends up getting himself 
literally pecked to death and eaten by the birds. I don't understand how we got to that point. It was yeah, because like, like I didn't understand like how his body moved. He well probably would have been like at the bottom of those stairs unless he somehow walked over to a little, that rock bed and fell yeah. over and just had the birds eat him. But how did the like how did the fall down the stairs like open his guts in the first place too? I, so I don't it's, know. Like, that's another that's another question I had. It was just kind of weird that he was like. I mean, I guess this again. I I don't understand what was going on, but it was very weird that he just like fell down these stairs, and all of a sudden you're watching him getting pecked to death. Do you know what else was weird, Adam, what in this there? movie that had several weird things? Uh, so one of the fights that that they have together, it ends with Defoe. Well, they show him like being a mermaid, like per- person thing, where mm. he's a he, he looks like he has like a bunch of like sea mold on him, and he's like, <laughs> um. But anywho, Robert Pattinson, he, he beats his ass. He beats yeah. up Willem Dafoe, yeah, and uh, I guess he just decides, like, you're a dog now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're, you're a dog. Um, can, can you talk about that? Like, why 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 did he decide I, he's just like, you're my bitch. Like, you're, you're just a wimpy dog. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why he decided, like. I mean, it, it was like a power thing. It's it was definitely like, a power thing. He's just like, Robert woof for me. Was woof. Like, and he's just like, he wasn't doing it. He's like, I said woof. And then <laughs> Defoe's just like, woof, 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 woof. Like, uh, and, and I mean, like, they, I mean. There's nothing Willem Defoe could do, though. I would, I would No, but he's also it. lost his marble, so yeah. it doesn't, it's not actually that big of a stretch. Like, when it mm-hmm. happens in the movie, like, I wasn't like, oh, that's weird. No, I, I, was like, yeah, I was just like, okay. This is reasonable. Like, he just, like, beat the shit out of him, basically. But what I didn't see coming, because I thought, like, okay, like, he's having his power trip moment where he's like, woof, 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 woof. <laughs> it carries into the next scene, where, like, he gets a rope around him, and, like, he's walking Defoe around like a dog. He's on all fours. And I was like, wait, what? Like, that wasn't just for, like, a I'm powerful scene. He is officially a dog he's now. He's made of a dog, I guess. Yeah, it was really weird. It was... It was a good I was, touch, I was, I, I was I, laughing. I, I, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, I laughed at that because it's it's so absurd, <laughs> but yet disturbing that a man is is doing this to another person. Yeah. Um, but it was funny. I, 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 I was laughing. I was like, what, like, what in the world am I watching? Um, and then, yeah, and then like he, like he extends the power trip so much, he's like, okay, good boy, good. Go to your hole. <laughs> go, go, go to your hole. Like he's like, okay, just like climbs in to get buried. <clears throat> climbs in to get buried alive. But um, honestly, that sounds like a better way to go than getting pecked to death by a bunch of goals, though. So like, it seemed pretty peaceful. So you would rather be buried alive than get pecked to death by birds. Yeah, I think I would. It seems honestly. like an all right type of thing being buried to death it would probably just it would be a lot of pressure in your chest and then you would stop breathing that's probably what would happen yeah like uh, it would suck if i was like buried i feel like being buried to death is a pretty quick death is the nice thing about it yeah like everything just goes black and you just lose all the oxygen in your lungs but being pecked to death sounds pretty like painful and terrible it would take a long time it would I take imagine. a long time too you know? <laughs> i know so speaking of bizarre deaths um there used to be this show. Do you re- you remember Spike TV? Yeah, uh, like a thousand <clears throat> ways to die. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you ever watch that? <laughs> Sometimes, not a bunch, but every once in a while. I just remember that they had a. <clears throat> was that it, okay, I have a question. Yeah. Was that were those ways people actually died? Yes. Or were they just really no, like they're documented. Yeah. yeah, like they they didn't just make them up and try to think of clever ways to to have people die. They're documented from real stories. Damn dude. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me. Um. The reason I bring it up is because, speaking of slow deaths, I always remember an episode on there where, I think it took place in like the 20s or 30s, mm-hmm. and there was a man that had robbed a bank, and he had like gotten out into like the country or something, and he was evading like law enforcement, and he decided to go crawl into like a sewer grate mm-hmm. or something, but as he's crawling in there, he gets stuck. He gets stuck in the sewer grate, and he oh, can't get God. out, and rats on the other side of it eat him. Like, from front, like, to his face. Oh, my gosh, dude. Can you imagine that? that like, how long that would so take? Bad. And, like, you're alive for the whole thing while this rat is just slowly gnawing away at you. Oh, God, dude. I am yeah. I hope I die of a bird attack. That sounds like a nice way to is go. Is that, I was going to say, is that the way? Die with my loved ones around me. But your heart fails while they're there. While they're there, yeah. 
Do you think you're going to do like the dramatic one where you're like, like, so you know, probably not. No, I feel like I feel like heart attacks. I wish heart attacks were like that, but I don't think most heart attacks. They are seem like, like that. that sometimes in the I, movies, I think where, like, someone just like, like grips their chest, they fall over and they wail. They're like, oh. Like, I, I've never heard of that. I feel like heartaches are more just like you have a headache and all of a sudden you pass out and you die. Yeah. Which doesn't sound like too, such a terrible way to go, but... Would you rather be buried alive or would you rather be eaten by seagulls? Mm. Uh, well, did I, like, did I get, like, my head bashed in when the seagulls are eating me? Or is it just, like, I'm laying on the beach perfectly healthy and I'm like, come eat me, seagulls. I would like, say it's how, the same like, as Robert Pattinson, where... Or I'm kind of mangled from a previous You're mangled thing. from a previous thing, but you're still alive, and then the birds just start I guess, eating no, you. I'll be honest, I, I guess I'd rather just be buried alive. Yeah. I don't want to be picked apart by birds. That, does, that, that, <laughs> that sounds <laughs> pretty... It sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this movie was intense, man. It was a very intense it was an, movie. Yeah, it was a very intense movie. Yeah. But yeah, the subject of death is an interesting thing to talk about in this. Um, I don't know. I actually, like, I'm, I'm kind of like mo- a morbid person in a way. I think everybody thinks about how they want to die. Yeah. How do you want to die? Well, it's not from heart failure <laughs> like from you. heart failure? <laughs> no, no. Um, Dementia? I, <clears throat> no, that, I, actually, I think that's... Probably one of the most scary things that could happen to a person is losing your your mind. That doesn't sound very fun, yeah. Really. No, because like you don't know what's happening. Yeah. Like that's the whole thing. Like you're you other people are telling you like you're insane, and you're like I no I I'm fine I I'm fine. Uh, it might be entertaining at least to a certain extent, but no, it, I guess if I was gonna die, <clears throat> or when I die, like most people, if I pass away peacefully in my sleep, that would be nice. I That'd guess. Nice, like, yeah. I just, I, I'm so old, my body just shuts off, and I'm like, okay, I'm dead now. Yeah. That would be good. Um, if it wasn't that way, uh, I suppose I'd like to have my family around. Mm-hmm. If I, like, if I'm in a hospital from, like, I, I don't want to joke around about cancer or anything like that, but if I had some so, something like that and I had family with me at least yeah. to, like, ease the suffering or... Oh, yeah, that's so nice. Like, I gotta be, that, like, 80, would be, and then I have a bunch of, like, kids and grandkids around me, you know? Yeah. That's a good way to go. Yeah, um, or uh, option three would just be, like, something really, like, quick, like yeah. an explosion, or, <laughs> uh, I don't know, like, I, like, fell out of a plane mm-hmm. and just smash against, like, the ground and, like, just die splat. That would be, yeah. Just something like that, because, like, that's at least, like, I mean, that's a hell of a way to go out, for one. I mean, that's, yeah. like, there's some intense ways to go out that are still quite painful, I imagine, but mm-hmm. don't involve the slow, meticulous nature of birds pecking me to death. No, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. Like I a nuclear like bomb going off in our backyard. That would be a nice way to go. I would literally, we would just be sitting here talking about this podcast, and all of a sudden, just we see the flash, right? We see, like, we fl- see like a like this blinding flash. We're like, oh, it's over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, That'd be a good way to go, man. No, I don't know. Um, Wait, here's a question I have for you too. Yeah. How long do you think you could last in a lighthouse like that? Like, I was one, you, I was how, wondering this question as well. How long well do you I, give yourself before you go mentally insane? Well. Similar to what we talked about in the Shining episode, I talked about what I would do if I went insane, but how long it would take is a different question. In that environment, if I just have Willem Dafoe with me, yeah, I mean, actually, he's I seem I could probably have a good time with him. Like he's uh, he's yeah. a, he's a character. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go with like six months. Yeah. I feel like. And that could be a stretch, because it could, like, six months alone there could feel like a lot longer. No, yeah, I imagine. And they don't have, like, cell phones or or anything to keep them company. Uh They don't have, like, they don't have a TV. No, yeah. Um, It's just them and their thoughts. They just got their thoughts in the sea and uh, and mermaid statues. I feel like it's it's very dependent on what exactly you're doing, too. Because I feel like I would go insane after, like, a month if I was drinking gin every single night, drinking kerosene. Only yeah. shell. I'm only eating shellfish. I feel like I would go insane after like a few weeks. Actually, <laughs> that specific scenario. Yeah. But those people <clears throat> were a lot harder back then, you know. So. It, they they definitely seem like the people of that generation. I think had a very hardened existence. Yeah. They, I think I feel like everybody back then had to work harder. Everybody like yeah. just had that hard work mentality built into them because they had to. Otherwise, you die. Uh huh. Um. 
I don't know. It, the movie the movie actually does make me curious about like just lighthouse keeping and like the seas and things like that because mm-hmm. I felt like there was a lot of lore that they were talking about sailors and things like that. But and like mm-hmm. and maybe some of that was in Defoe's rambling drunk poems. I I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but it it makes me curious about it. Have um, you ever have you ever been to a lighthouse? Have you seen a lighthouse before? I feel like I've probably like maybe like. Well, actually, no. I'm I'm gonna say no. I, I actually don't think I've ever seen a lighthouse like in person. I was thinking maybe I like drove by one once. There's, there's not a lot of them because like I think yeah. when, well, actually, it depends on where you are. I think in areas like Nova Scotia where this was like taking place at, they're probably much more prominent. But the one that I know of is Split Rock, which is off the coast of Superior, and it was only active for four years because they built the thing. And they used it, and then after like four years, they got better technology where they didn't need to use lighthouses anymore. So it basically became non-existent. And but. well, I just googled. There's 700, roughly 700 lighthouses that are in the United States still. Are, that's, they, are they still working? Like, well, still that's operating? what I, that's what I want to see because uh, I'm very curious about this. So, Light uh, lighthouses today would be completely pointless though because we have radar and like GPS. Are lighthouses still used? Let's see. Though numerous lighthouse, or though numerous lighthouses still serve seafarers, I just feel like I have to say it like a <laughs> scurvy, like a pirate. Um, though they still serve seafarers, modern electronic aids to navigate. Wait, oh my god, I can't re- read this, Adam. I can't read this. Modern electronic aids to navigate play a larger role in the ma- maritime safety in the twenty-first century. Okay. That makes and, sense. And so, yeah, then the lighthouses and beacons are towers with bright lights and fog holes. Okay, well, I get I get what they are. So, like, yeah, they use, like, radar now or GPS to be like, hey, those are that's the coast there. Let's not go that way sort of thing, you know? Like, there's no way they still use lighthouses anymore. But... <laughs> I just put, will I go insane at a lighthouse? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't... Uh, I wonder if there are actual stories actually, of people going crazy. This, well, see, do do lighthouse keepers go crazy? Oh, like, go. I, 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 I want to. I feel like most lighthouse most lighthouse keepers brought like their families with them. So I'm gonna read yeah. this off this uh, apparently answers to all dot com. Oh, okay. It's no doubt a reputable place. <laughs> so it says the, the question is: Do lighthouse keepers go crazy? And the answer is: In the 19th century, lighthouse keepers had a high frequency of madness and suicide. Okay, so that's yes. Uh, many assume that they went mad from solitude and the demands of the job. The lenses developed by French physicist Augustin Jean Fresnel, or Fre- Fresnel, whatever, uh, greatly increased the intensity and range of the lighthouse beacon. I didn't need to know that part. I just wanted to know if they went insane. I guess they did. I guess they probably did. Okay. It makes sense. Solitude and just like sitting by yourself. And... Oh, well, here it says, why did the lighthouse keepers? So we answered if they did, but why? 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 Uh, they, they went crazy then because they were over... Wait, then? I'm, I'm, my brain's broken. Read this. The, read then. this whole thing. Okay. Then, because they were overdue due to bad weather, he must have started to smell, so he took him out and lashed the body to the gallery round the outer part of the lantern. Wait, what is this? Is this like I don't a specific, know. Is this like a specific story? I'm, I guess. I don't know. That's because that's why I was confused. Elaine Moore is the specific, the specific lighthouse maybe that they're talking about. Oh, they they, they use mercury in the lighthouse too. Maybe they were drinking that, <laughs> or would they just die from that? Oh, they use mercury to pout <clears throat> like the lighthouse bulb moved around in mercury because it's very yeah. it's low friction. So they probably so they have mercury <clears throat> poison as well on top of the kerosene on top of the the scurvy and everything else they had. I could see why you would go crazy living in a lighthouse. Oh, when th- dude, this is actually about the movie. Cuz like I I'm I'm looking at this too and they're actually saying is the lighthouse based on a true story. So like this is oh, also about okay. the movie. Oh, so this too. is an actual movie. Oh. It says it's a, it says it's actually the film is very loosely based on an old Welsh story about a pair of lighthouse keepers. Well, I remember it was a, it was an Edgar Allan Poe. Um, That's what you were saying. That like you said that, that you thought it was based on Edgar Allan Poe. This is what the Wikipedia article said before we watched the movie that Edgar Allan Poe started writing a story about two men going crazy in a lighthouse, and that this is what it was based off of, or like this movie was based off that. But 
Yeah. It does seem very Edgar Allan Poe. I like this poster <laughs> <laughs> of the bird. <laughs> just <laughs> the birds are very creepy in this movie. Yeah, the whole movie is just creepy. Uh, it's this, this is a good it's, one too. It's you got, some, got some squids going around here. That oh, I forgot about that part too, where like there was naked Defoe that his eyes were were beacons of light shining into his face. Oh, God. You remember yeah, that? I do remember that. Yeah, he was like a he was like Jack too, wasn't he? Because he was like. Uh, maybe I don't know. That's pretty good too. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> the Lighthouse is a good movie. I'm glad we watched it, Jordan. Yeah, th- this. Yeah, there, I, I'm. There's there, there was another thing I was gonna say though about the yeah because we talked about Defoe being a dog. Mm-hmm. That was uh, I certainly got a good chuckle from that. But Jerking off. The yeah, they they were masturbating to the fish. That was weird. The tongue thing was weird. The tongue the tongue thing was funny. <laughs> like just like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did we leave anything out? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, the, I just this is a this is gonna be a movie I'm gonna be thinking about for a while. Yeah. Like I just know, like because like it, and if I sound kind of inarticulate the way I'm describing this is because it's so fresh on my mind that I'm just trying to articulate how I feel about it. Yeah, I'm trying to put the pieces together. Because it's and such a strange are, movie. Yeah, the pieces are pretty like haphazardly out there, and they don't seem to really fit together. Which yeah. is kind of what makes it such a good movie in a sense, because you're just confused the whole time. And I'm, I'm confused thinking about it. I'm a little less confused now that we're talking about it, mm-hmm. because I'm glad we're, like, we're talking about the fact that maybe we should be confused. Like, that makes me feel like I understand the movie a little bit more, honestly. Yeah. But it's still, I don't know. There's still a lot going on I just didn't really understand at the same time, too. I actually think the next time I watch this, because this is actually a movie, I would rewatch it. Oh yeah, I, I think it merits rewatching because there's a lot of details mm-hmm. actually. I mean, and even like the way it's shot, it is a beautifully shot movie. It like I cool. really, I wish I could like actually like have the the technical know how to get into like the the cinematography of it. But it's 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 very interesting how they the shot choices that they had in this movie. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think if I did rewatch this, I would actually probably put on subtitles. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, and I really don't like doing that for a lot of movies, but. There are just those extensive dialogue sequences where it's hard to understand everything he's saying, cause, yeah. and some of it might just be psychobabble. Yeah. Um, but I would like to, I would like to put the subtitles on to see what they're saying. Yeah, you get lost in what they're saying sometimes, and I'm not. It's sometimes the audio, but sometimes I just feel like they're like rambling, and yeah. I can't tell if I'm supposed to like get something out of the rambling or if I'm just like as confused as they are. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell that sometimes. So I feel like subtitles would help with that of like, I don't know though, because then it would be telling you like, okay, they are going insane. You shouldn't understand what they're saying right now. Or, but maybe we honestly, we might miss a plot point or two. Who knows? But I suspect that we I suspect we missed, missed quite a, plot a few. Point or two. <laughs> and, but like, we weren't talking during the movie. Like no. I, like we weren't, there was a couple times, like I, I think both of us couldn't help it. We're just like, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> like what, what is happening movie? Oh my God. <laughs> I feel like you have to say something when he's sticking his tongue out like that. You know, we yeah. can't just be like, "Oh yeah, that's a nor- that's normal." What is okay? So, if you had to pick out your favorite moment in this movie, what what what? Would I think be? my favorite my favorite like short scene of the movie was the part where they were drinking, and they were both like right next to each other, and With they the just bottle. down just like the, like the they... bottle. They were just <laughs> chugging it. It was like it was comical and scary and like very fitting to their like mental state. Uh, I thought was, I thought it was fantastic. What was your favorite part of the movie, Jordan? Um, what was the most memorable for you? Well, well so I, I'm I'm just looking up some of these some of these stills from this movie because this this movie has just very creepy imagery. Yeah, just very <laughs> creepy imagery throughout. Like oh look, look at that one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look, look at that one. <laughs> Uh, having sex with the mermaid is definitely also very like yeah wow well then see like i forgot about this too so yeah like when he's when he's punching defoe defoe uh-huh. transforms into a squid that's wrapping around him like, yeah that, that was that was freaking bizarre like look at that look at that <laughs> but seriously it's like it is like something out of like a it does look like an old horror movie the way that his face is lit here yeah the black and white, it's it's very powerful in this movie. It yeah, works, it, works it really, so well. really works. I, this movie would not not be nearly as effective without that. Um, <clears throat> no, but as far as as far as my favorite moments, um, well, 
has a lot of a lot of goofy moments. Oh, I forgot about this part too when he's gonna kill the foe. To, oh yeah, to, to, to get the keys. Uh -huh. So you can go and stare at the light. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> oh. yes. Dog foe. Oh yeah, <laughs> Willem the <to> dog. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so I, I I need to answer the question. Mm. The bird sequence. I mean, it's just like it's so shocking when he does it. Like that scene really unsettled me, and it. Like I mean, it worked. It worked. I I I I did enjoy that scene. I'm not saying I enjoy animal violence, but. Oh. I enjoyed that scene because, yeah, his character was just breaking. He just was at his wit's end. He did not care anymore. Yeah. And the damn birds, they were annoying him. The damn birds, too. I'll tell you what. Um, <clears throat> now, I, I actually think I, I really liked, I talked about that lobster sequence where he's saying, like, you don't like my cooking. <laughs> and, and he flips out and goes into that poetry monologue. I, yeah. I like that. I thought that was brilliant. Um, that's one of Defoe's best scenes, I think, in the movie. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I did enjoy the like I, I enjoyed the mermaid scenes, the the really creepy creepy mermaid scenes. Not like the maybe the sexual ones because they're weird. Um, and then I think I, I think I really did enjoy the end. Like I I thought it built up and it ended the way I think it should have. Yeah, yeah um, very well. Yeah. There's actually probably I think there's probably some message. There must be some message uh, about. I don't know, because like he, he killed the bird. I keep going back to that, but he killed the bird. Yeah. And I think like maybe the movie's trying to have like an omen of like, don't do this. Yeah. Or there there must be some type of don't make the sea there. angry. Yeah. Don't the make sea... the sea angry because it, it'll it'll turn on you and you'll go insane. <laughs> the sea was angry that day, my friends. What, what is that from? <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> that, that was, God, Have I you heard, seen that episode? Yes, he's like, the, the sea was angry that day, my friends, and it's George when he goes to save the whale. The marine biologist. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like one of the a classic Kramer's Seinfeld Kramer's golf episode. ball was in the blowhole, right? <laughs> I forgot about that. That's, the yeah. sea was angry that day, my friends. <laughs> What is this movie? Well, okay. What would you What would you rate this movie? Because the last time oh. we did an in person podcast, we watched Pig, and we gave we gave our reviews on like what we would rate the movie. Yeah. What are we going on a scale for? We did. We did. I remember we did A through F last time because I gave Pig a B minus. Okay. Okay. Well, you go ahead first. I think I would give this movie an A minus. I like this movie better than Pig. Yeah. It was impactful. It was very good. I. I don't really have any many gripes with it, honestly. No. I mean, like, oh. I, I was just so confused during a lot of it, but I think they wanted me to be confused. So but it, it just wasn't like well. the like if you're if you're gonna compare to like Pig, which I'm not saying that it's a comparison, but yeah, like even I remember in Pig there was some stuff that confused me, but it wasn't like a good confusion. Like there no, was just was stuff just where I was like, like, I don't understand this. Yeah, like the underground kitchen part in Pig. You're just I'm watching it. I'm like I'm confused right now, but not in a good way. Like this movie is just taking a weird turn, and I don't understand it. Yeah. But in this movie, like you're like they're going insane. I don't understand what they're doing, but I guess they're going insane, so it makes sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, the dance sequence was so good too. When they're dancing and like they're like they're pounding their chests at one point. They're like, dance. yes, yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Give, I would give I, this movie an A minus. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I think I think A minus. The only reason I'm not giving it an A plus is just simply because there was some tricky dialogue sequences where mm. I wasn't quite understanding what they were saying. Yeah, but that that might have just been me. Yeah, I feel but like A plus is like this the is best a damn, movie this, ever. This is know. a damn good movie. It is a really good movie. Like I I I told Adam like after after we watched them like I would I'll probably end up buying this movie. Because I don't, I don't think they have a 4K of it. Not that it would necessarily make, make that much of a difference being yeah. black and white. But I, this is this is a movie that would be worth owning if you collect physical media. Um, I think it would be a good one in the collection, and it is an original movie. Oh yeah, make no mistake, people. This <laughs> is an original movie. It is very. It is a good movie. It's it's very different. If you would show it to yeah. like showing it to people would be an interesting thing. Be like, hey man, let's watch this movie together where this guy is having sex with a fish. It, it just is, works really well, man. It is and weird. It yeah, it's hard to describe too, just how weird it is. You kind of gotta watch it really to be like actually fully understand what is going on and like because well, I could I could say like he was sticking his tongue out in the rain, 
but all the other stuff to add on top of that and the like the slow progression to the insanity yes. just make it work so well yeah i uh i'm just thinking because i i really don't this movie definitely wouldn't be for everybody, of course. Yeah. I'm sure there would be some that would watch this movie and they would just be incredibly off-put by some of the things that happen <clears throat> um, because it is a disturbing and unsettling movie. Uh, but I, I got to stand I gotta stand by what I said in that this is an original movie and if you are wanting to watch something that truly is not like anything else and you want to have an experience, I would say watch this movie because it it, take, it takes you for a ride. It really does. Um, and I would like to rewatch it again, but I, I doubt it's it's not going to ever be that first time. This is one of those <laughs> movies where like I would I would love to be able to erase my memory and watch it again yeah. for the first time because of just the ride that it takes you on. It is it is a crazy ride, but it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I, I I would definitely recommend it, and I'm I'm glad that you brought it up because I. This movie's been on my radar actually for a while, and I just mm-hmm. I never really got around to watching it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would have ever sought it out really. Yeah, I just I heard it was good. I'm like, eh, like maybe if I stumbled across it. But thank you. That's yeah. that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Adam, for having. A, I feel like you you have a pretty good taste in movies, or at the very least, like you're not afraid to 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 adventure out a little bit. I'll watch anything. Something. It's hard to say I have a good taste because I don't watch a lot of movies. Like there are people that know a lot more about movies than I do, but I do enjoy I do enjoy a good movie, and I'll watch pretty much anything. So yeah. and I I like the interesting weird shit. So well, this is this is definitely one of those movies. So I'm glad. Thanks for having me on the podcast, Jordan. Thanks for watching with me. Yeah, yeah. no, this is, I, this, is, I, this, is, this is fun. I enjoyed it. Um, final final thoughts, I guess. Fi- final thoughts on the lighthouse, if if you do have any left. Um, you should see this movie. It's very good. And I'm glad I don't have to drink kerosene and live alone on an island for a long period of time, because I would probably go insane. Yeah. Um, my final thoughts. Also watch this movie. I think it's it's worth doing it. Don't drink kerosene. I would say that. Be kind to birds. Do do not <laughs> anger the birds. <laughs> um, and. and uh, yeah, maybe treat people that work in isolation kindly, or ch- check in on them. Check in ch- on ch- them, check, yeah. check in on the people that you're like, I. they haven't had a lot of interaction with someone for a while. I want to make sure they're okay. Isolation's good for no one. It sends people down on a spiral. Yeah. But, yeah, that's life. All right, that's all I got to say about this, but, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and, actually, I just realized I went this whole episode. I didn't put any plugs in. No. Oh. Well, you got to put your plug in, some, plug, uh, put plugs in there. Yeah, I'll put, it, I'll put it at the very end. Follow and download episodes of Screenspeak on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Uh, but mainly hit the follow button because that's going to make sure that you don't miss out on future episodes. Um, and then it also just really helps grow the audience so that the way this thing can get shared and spread around and whatnot. Uh, so I would really, really appreciate it. Adam himself, I think, is a follower. I am a follower. You, 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 yeah. Are you a follower of me podcast? I follow on Spotify. I don't say I wouldn't say I listen to every episode, but like if it's something that interests me, I definitely take a listen. It's okay. And keep keep it up, Jordan. Yeah. Keep it up. No, uh, twice a week. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Like, comment, and subscribe. Do that too. And there's an Instagram. So. Yeah. All right, I got nothing else. This episode's over. It's 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 over